From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. We have food insecurity. We need rental assistance and mortgage assistance. That's the message we're trying to send to our senators. One group wants its message heard loud and clear that the live music and entertainment industry is in a crisis and needs help now. The mayor's response in moments. Protecting yourself from identity thieves. I'm Kara Kenny with why a customer says a visit to a furniture store put his identity at risk. Democracy 2020 and a deeper look into one of Indiana's most watched races ahead of the November election. Starting tonight, we are profiling each candidate in Indiana's 5th District Congressional race. Here it comes. We can't hold it back when temperatures will push 80 degrees once again. Well, good evening and thanks for joining us here on WRTV. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. First tonight, in less than a half hour, President Donald Trump is expected to leave the hospital and return to the White House days after he was diagnosed with COVID-19. The president tweeted he will leave Walter Reed Medical Center at 6.30 this evening. In his tweet, he also said he is feeling really good and that we should not be afraid of COVID. We will have complete coverage of the president being discharged from the hospital on World News tonight with David Muir at 6.30. The live music and entertainment industry is one of the many that really took a hard hit once the pandemic took its grip. Working for you, WRTV Stephanie Wade was downtown when a large group gathered there to send a message to lawmakers asking for help. From Monument Circle to the Indiana War Memorial, a group of live music and entertainment workers pushed carts. They're empty boxes because road boxes don't have the equipment in there that you would need for a show because there are no shows. Showcasing the number of people out of work because of canceled shows and entertainment due to COVID-19. The truth of the matter is over 83,000 people in this community rely on tourism for a paycheck. And at this point in time, more than half of those are unemployed. The International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees representing stagehands, wardrobe workers, convention workers. It's abysmal what's happening. Saying there might be no empty storefront or restaurant you can point to and see, but this shutdown is felt nonetheless. And we would love to go back. We want to go back. We don't want the unemployment. We don't want the FEMA. We want to go back. This event is really just illustrating the shocking number of Hoosiers who have been impacted by this six month shutdown. All of the people who are out of work right now. That goes for sound technicians, lighting technicians, and the list goes on. We are the invisible workforce because we are behind the scenes. The convention center itself has lost hundreds of millions of dollars because of the pandemic. As gig workers, they only get paid when they work. Many fearing what the industry will be if events can't convene. Bring the magic back. We do the magic. Bring it back. We need it. We all need it. We needed it since March. Now urging lawmakers to act. Obviously, people are asking for help, right? They're losing jobs. They've been out of work. How are you helping them? How are you fighting for them? Yeah, a number of different ways. We were given $168 million in uh, CARES Act allocation in March. The mayor of Indianapolis says they have already appropriated all of those funds. An $11 million grant program specifically focused on helping the hospitality industry. But he says it's just not enough. I just want Congress to come together and, and send us uh, more support to help these families go back to work. Stephanie Wade, WRTV. First time claims for unemployment benefits in Indiana are still high. For the week that ended September 26, more than 10,700 Hoosiers filed for regular unemployment benefits for the first time. The week before that, more than 11,700 people in Indiana filed for benefits. And the goal of our Hiring Hoosiers initiative is to make sure you know what jobs are available to you, especially in the middle of this pandemic. You can find a list of open positions and other resources needed to get into the job you want by going to HiringHoosiers.com and to the Hiring Hoosiers Facebook page. 
It's been about seven months since health officials declared a COVID-19 a pandemic, and there's still a major issue here in Indiana. The State Department of Health confirms 835 additional cases of the coronavirus. That's a fewer new cases in the state reported yesterday, but numbers are usually lower on Mondays due to delayed reporting from the labs over the weekend. So far, more than 125,900 Hoosiers have been diagnosed with COVID-19, and 8.8% of the 1.4 million individuals tested for COVID-19 in Indiana have tested positive for the virus. WRTV investigates is on the case. The Fisher's man says his personal information was photocopied at a local furniture store and later ended up in the hands of another customer. David Pendleton is raising concerns about this data breach. He contacted WRTV investigates for help. Our Kara Kenny is digging into what happened and finding out whether you should hand over your driver's license or credit cards when a store asks. Your driver's license and credit card contain valuable personal information for identity thieves like your name, address, date of birth, and credit card number, which is why the Attorney General's office says you need to protect this information. David Pendleton needed a piece of furniture for his family room and on September 19th visited the Ashley Home Store in the Castleton area. When David went to pay with his Ashley Advantage credit card, he says the salesperson made a request. He did ask to make a copy of my driver's license and credit card, which at the time felt completely unnecessary and felt odd. But he said, we just need this to send in uh, and to keep with your paperwork. Even though David was not applying for anything, just making a purchase, he reluctantly handed over his credit card and driver's license. Days later, he got a Facebook message from a stranger named Ryan Lundquist. And the first thing I saw was this picture of my ID and my uh, credit card. Ryan received a copy of David's personal information by accident while visiting Ashley Home Store. Oh my goodness, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And what do I do with this? You know, is Ryan someone that can be trusted? Turns out he is trustworthy. Ryan is an Army veteran and father and destroyed the document after he messaged David. I was shocked that this could happen uh, at all, that I had this uh, such sensitive information. Were you thinking, well, thank goodness I'm not a bad guy? Exactly, yeah. It, I put myself in David's position and it was such an egregious breach in, in his financial security. David says he had a hard time getting an explanation of how this happened. So it was at that point that I reached out to RTV6. We took our questions to the head of consumer protection with the Indiana Attorney General's office. Would that be considered a data breach? Yes. Yes, so that in, in a serious data breach. While Indiana businesses can collect credit card information, they're supposed to store it separately from other personal identifiers like your name and address. That they collect it, they try to keep it safe, um, and they have obligations under Indiana law to do that. And if there's information gets out there, they have also have obligations to notify the consumer and notify the Indiana Attorney General's office to let us know so that we can follow up with consumers. Criminals can use bits of information to steal your identity and open accounts in your name. In David's case, a treasure trove was on that piece of paper. The more information that you have collected, the higher the risk to the consumer, the higher the risk of the data breach. We reached out to Ashley Furniture's corporate office and they told us this was an isolated incident and was addressed. In this case, certain customer information was inadvertently mixed with another transaction. The company also says we consistently adhere to best practices to protect customer data. David learned the store had another copy of his personal information in addition to the one Ryan intercepted. I've asked Ashley to destroy it and they have uh, written back to me and they've put it in writing that they have in fact done that. A customer service rep also told David, we humbly regret the situation that occurred during your visit to the Castleton Ashley Home Store on September 19th and the circumstances that followed. David plans to file a complaint with the Attorney General, which has a data privacy team that can investigate. David and Ryan met in person for the first time this week. So I'm thoroughly uh, appreciative of your service. They both hope their story prompts changes at the furniture store and raises awareness about data security. 
David is relieved it was Ryan, not someone else, who ended up with his personal information. I believe what goes around comes around. One of the best ways to protect your identity is to freeze your credit for free. Just go to indianaconsumer.com and click on Freeze Identity Thieves. Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. The Attorney General's office says you can protect yourself in other ways when a business asks to copy your information. Ask questions such as, why is there a need to copy it? What will they do with this information and how long will they retain it? If you do not feel comfortable, you can always refuse or leave the business. Also make sure you check your credit card statements and credit reports regularly for any unusual activity. If there's n no longer a need for them to maintain a copy of that, then certainly you're within your rights to, to ask for that back or ask why they want to maintain that information. The Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council says merchants should not store customer sensitive data such as card identification numbers, CVVs and pins or cards magnetic stripe data. A Boone County judge has dismissed all three reckless homicide charges against a Michigan truck driver. Prosecutors charge Matthew Small in the crash that happened near mile marker 130 on I-65 back in January, killing a baby and two adults. Small told investigators that he looked away from the road to set down his coffee when he realized traffic had stopped. The judge handed down that decision Friday, calling it an accident, but not criminal conduct. Boone County prosecutors are now looking to see if they have any additional evidence that would allow them to refile charges against Small. Small's attorney, Todd Meyer, says Small was devastated by the crash and said the judge made the right decision. We are less than a month away from Election Day, a huge deadline tonight and other information you should know to make sure your vote counts. That's next. Plus, one of the most watched races in Indiana comes from the 5th Congressional District. This week, we're profiling all of the candidates beginning tonight with Republican Victoria Sparks. And a big blue H on the weather map means a couple things. One, it will be dry this week, but what else will it bring? The answer coming up. Boone County wasn't much different than most central Indiana counties this morning. Temperatures in the low to mid 30s. Thanks to Brenda Davis for sending in this beautiful fall picture. And you can see the strip of frost separating uh, the two cornfields there. Lots of harvesting going on at this time of year. And you can see the corn going down and the temperatures coming down. But the trend is for warmer air to return this week. We're currently at 61. What a great recovery. Most areas jumped 30 degrees from morning low to afternoon high. Evening temperatures again will cool quickly as sky is clear and the air is dry. The general trend for the rest of the week, a warming trend. The wind will be noticeable, gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour the next couple of days. But get used to clear skies at night and a lot of sunshine during the day. Low temperatures, not as cool tomorrow morning. Then as you see Wednesday, a noticeable bump up, but that's temporary. We'll be back in the 40s again on Thursday. Hello, Bloomington. Uh, blue sky there and the temperatures falling from the 60s into the low 40s tonight. The wind tomorrow out of the southwest at about 20. Those will be the gusts, uh, generally 10 to 15 with a little higher gust. Afternoon temperatures above 70 degrees. We're making some progress. We will push on Wednesday, temperatures closer to 80. So the temperature tomorrow is the base temperature from which we'll continue to warm up. The area of high pressure that I showed you, that's off to the east. So our wind comes around to the southwest and that is key to the warm up. It's reflected by the afternoon hours on Wednesday. Again, the warmth tempered a little bit by the wind gust to nearly 30 miles per hour through the day. Again, lots of sunshine. Did you notice the arrows change a little bit late in the day? Temperatures will be cooler than what we're looking at here for Wednesday on Thursday, temporary hit, temperatures about 10 degrees cooler in many spots. There are your highs Thursday, lower 70s. Friday, we're back to 75. Let's put all the pieces of the puzzle back together for you now. Temperatures uh, are their warmest on Wednesday, and even when they're cooler, they're still above average, and you see how it plays out the rest of the week. We're dry overnight, 
low temperatures back into the 50s. No more frost in the forecast. It's tomorrow morning that will be the coolest. Otherwise, we're in the safe zone as far as that's concerned. Safe zone, good place to be, Kevin. Thank you. Democracy 2020, this is the final day that you can register to vote in Indiana's November general election. County election offices are closed, so you can no longer register in person. However, you can register to vote online until midnight tonight. To do that, just go to indianavoters.in.gov. We also have a link to that website on wrtv.com slash vote in 2020. And then tomorrow in person early voting for the general election opens across the state. We have your guide to the November general election up right now on our website, WRTV.com. That includes all of the dates you need to know in order to make sure your vote counts. Again, that's all at WRTV.com slash vote in 2020. As we get closer to the November 3rd general election here at WRTV, we are highlighting some of the key races Hoosiers will decide on. Indiana's 5th Congressional District is open. As you can see, much of our viewing area is within District 5. That includes parts of Marion County, Hamilton County, part of Boone County, Madison County, Tipton County, Grant County, and Blackford County. Incumbent, con incumbent Congresswoman Susan Brooks has decided to retire, and tonight our Nicole Griffin sits down with Republican candidate Victoria Sparts. After growing up in Ukraine, Victoria Sparts met her husband while in college on a train in Europe. He is from Noblesville, which is what brought Sparts to Indiana. I was young and adventurous, and with one suitcase, I came to this country for American dream, life, and build my future. Sparts, who is now a mother of two, began her career as a bank teller. Eventually, she became a CPA, a business owner, and now a state senator. I work on a lot of education reforms, health care, and uh, government efficiency as a CPA. I can bring a lot of good perspectives from business world. Now, during her campaign for Indiana's 5th Congressional District, District, the biggest issue she is focusing on is health care. So we need to start looking how we can eliminate these barriers, provide more choice, and stop government and big monopolies controlling prices. We need to have more transparency in the system, and it can be done at the federal level because it's controls right now, most of insurance. As a businesswoman, she says the pandemic has affected small businesses more than larger companies. If elected, she wants to focus on reviving small businesses across the state. You know, and it's going to be by lower taxes, less regulation, and better financial framework for them to grow businesses. So we have to look back and say, okay, what did we do well? How we can do better? Can we have a much faster engagement with private enterprise to deliver good vaccine, to deliver good testing that is rapid and done in a good manner faster? When it comes to improving equality, Sparks plans to focus on helping our youth. She does not support pushing kids into the juvenile justice system. Give them second chance and help them to advance them with better tools and equip them for better future and have a welfare system that moves you up from welfare and not just keeps you in suppress, just use it on at the levels that you always stay poor. She says her focus, if she is elected, is on getting results for the people. I'm not looking for a job. I want to do a job for the people and I want to do it well. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, WRTV. Again, Indiana's 5th Congressional District covers parts of Marion, Hamilton, Tipton, Madison, Grant, and Blackford counties. Also on the ballot for Indiana's 5th Congressional District is Democratic nominee Christina Hale and Libertarian nominee Ken Tucker. We will take a closer look at both Hale and Tucker here on the News at 6 tomorrow and Wednesday. And you can learn more about each candidate by going to WRTV.com and clicking on the Election 2020 tab. Colts fans have to like what they've been seeing over the past three weeks. Sunday's win at Chicago seems to have the team on the roll as October begins. Brad Brown has a look back at week four's performance and how this winning streak is being led by the defense. Perhaps they're a modern day monsters of the midway, just a little further south on I-65. The Colts defense has been, over the past three games at least, the best in the NFL. They did it again on Sunday with a solid showing against the Bears. Of course, Flus. You know, Coach Frank, they bought in um, a culture of, you know, we're going to play fundamentally sound defensively, you know, and I, I really believe in that. I really believe in what they're doing. Um, and I think we have all, you know, all the guys on the team that buys into that, that that's special. 
And um, I think that's what we have brewing over here right now. Outside of a late Chicago touchdown, it was a total shutdown by the Indy D. Held the Bears to just a single field goal and less than 200 yards over the first three quarters. Only 28 rushing yards for the entire game. When you play in a defense that, you know, sets you up, you know, to, you know, make plays and, you know, keep, you know, everybody on the same page, you know, that's the main thing. You want to have everybody on the same page. So when you're on the same page, guys are able to fly around and execute. The biggest thing that stood out to me in training camp was how, how fast that everybody is running to the football. I mean, if, you know, you see some of those guys cut back and it's like, oh, one got missed. Oh, look, there might be something. There's another and there's another and there's another. I mean, the guys are relentless. The secondary continues to thrive. Rookie Julian Blackman, the latest to add a first to his resume. His first interception took likely points off the board for the Bears in the fourth quarter. I feel like, you know, there's a lot more work to be done. Um, I wasn't always in the in the best spots that I could have been in. And, uh, you know, I was just thankful to, to take one away because I, I should have had one earlier in the game, but uh, I didn't go get it. So I'm glad that I got one. The Colts offense continues to be underwhelming at times. They did manage five scoring drives on Sunday, but four of those ended in field goals. Struggles in the red zone and some big plays that just missed led to those results. I think the cool thing about this team as I'm learning and finding out, uh, uh, as we're finding out together is, that I think we can win in a lot of different ways. And I think uh, that, that will be key for us moving forward. Next up, a trip to Cleveland. The Browns scoring more than 30 points per game. They got 49 on Sunday at Dallas. Explosive playmakers are sure to challenge Indy's fast moving defensive unit. I know everybody knows this team, team, team. This, there's no, there's no stars, you know, right? I, there's great players. Darius is a great player, but you know, we like to talk about there are no stars. You know, we want great players. We want to be a great team. Brad Brown, WRTV Sports. Not much has changed in two months. The focus is on the thermometer, not your rain gauge. Temperatures climb above 70 tomorrow, upper 70s on Wednesday. A good theme, comfortable all week. Mark and Amanda. Thanks, Kevin, and thank you for making WRTV your choice for news. We hope you join us back here for the News at 7. Up next here is World News with David Muir.